two men walk into the octagon. Only one will walk out. Well, you got to count the referee. And if there's a big old melee at the end of the fight, you've got to count that too. Hello, how are you? Welcome to Octagon St. Laveau. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about all things relating to the octagon. And because I'm a novice, it's a, ball, a, bit about, a little bit about novice fever. I don't really know too much about the sport, but I'm looking forward to my first Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, or Karate class. Hey, if I'm going to talk about it, I need to practice too, right? So today, we're going to start off with, um, going to comment a little bit about the Rose Namunas and Jessica and Andrade fight. And I want to say right now, this is not an objective sport. This sport is extremely subjective. And I want to say that when you've got a champ who's champ champ or champ and she doesn't have a mark on her, but she loses, it's just weird to me. And when you have someone who's also a good fighter, but she's all cut up and she's all bruised, but she wins, it's weird to me. However, Jessica, uh, I think she just got tired of Rose using her as a punching bag and lifted her up and knocked her out, okay? And that is legal in MMA, and I wish it wasn't. But um, it's very, uh, what a great, what a great sport. Nothing objective about it, everything subjective. And props to Rose. You are, uh, we all adore you, Rose. Um, I wish I could train with you, Thug Rose. I'm, I'm telling you, I think you'd be a really, really good teacher. And I think that you wouldn't only teach me about the moves, but the inside, how to be a peaceful warrior on the inside. Okay, all right. And, and props to Jessica, uh, congratulations. And I'm looking forward to that rematch, all right? Uh, not me matching up with you, but you and Rose. Okay, right on. Okay, so next we're going to talk about, I've really been getting to definitions lately. We're going to talk a little about uh, the Taekwondo basics. And this is from Yates and Robbins' great 1987 book, which is called Taekwondo Basics, I believe. So I'm just going to name all the positions, and then we're going to go into our legend segment, all right? So the ready position is Junbi. The attention stance is Chekyo. The bow is Kunji. The forward stance is Chong Soik, the back stance is Fugal Soigi, straddle stance is Kima Soigi, and the cant stance is Gonyangi. Now, um, my, um, I do regret I'm not pronouncing these terms right, but I'm sure if I continue to study, I'll get the language correct at some point. So uh, the exercises, are toe and palm touch, there are sitting stretches, there's a hamstring muscle stretch, there's a groin muscle stretch, there are standing stretches, there's a front leg swing, there's a side leg swing, there's a partner stretch, and then there are sit-ups and push-ups. Pretty intense. There, um, segment three is punches and kicks. How to make a fist, How to chop, the palm heel strike, reserve punch, ridge hand, and elbow strike. The elbow strike to me is fascinating. That looks like a very dangerous strike. There are uh, four blocks, I believe. Down block, up, uh, down block is hard and mock, up block is chukomaki, inside block is ob shishi, outside block is yop maki, and knife hand block is sudomaki. And then there are five forms. Heaven and Earth, Chungi, Providence of Universe, Pelonj, Pine Tree Cell, Song Am, and Freedom Jiayu. Pretty wild, okay? So, um, there are four types of one steps, and I don't think I wrote those down, but there's some self-defense grabs and hugs such as that I did write down, which single wrist grab, double wrist grab, front choke, front bear hug, rear bear hug, shoulder grab, rear choke, rear arm lock. The naked end rear choke, um, it's a term that's been coming up frequently when um, 
I was checking out uh, the Guy in Our Legends segment today. Then there's sparring stances. There's the open stance and the closed stance. And um, I think the open stance is when both the sparring partners are facing each other and the closed stance is when one is turned this way and the other partners turn that way. I think I've got that right. It was pretty easy to, to check out um, through the pictures. Now, I've got some intense, um, I guess I just wrote all the list down of blocks, bow, bows, chops, dobok, um, how to bow, uh, fists in front of pelvis, legs apart, the sitting stretches. Uh, those notes are a little scattered, but uh, the book is great. Please, please check it out. And the pictures make it easy to follow the stances. Written by Yates and Robbins, uh, 1987. And I think that that was printed over in London, England, and then it was printed over here. Okay, so um, the personality that we're going to talk about today is Matt Hughes. I've been remembering back who I would always notice first when I first got into MMA UFC about a year ago. And the first couple guys, Chuck Liddell, and um, it was Randy Couture, and um, Theodore. And I just wanted to do everybody in a row, and I couldn't remember Matt's name for love or money. I'm like, I know his name is Matt, but what's his last name? And then I figured out who he was, and I was so happy that instead of skipping to a couple other guys I'd love to skip to, I just need to do him in the order that I saw all the fighters. So um, this is all information from MMA On Point. It's a great uh, YouTube channel about MMA. Please check, check it out. Uh, I'm quoting these guys some, sometimes directly. Uh, I'm going to try not to. They gave me some really good information that I couldn't find. Um, I couldn't find the information I wanted to somewhere, so I went to them. So basically, he and his twin brother, Mock, were born in Hillsboro, Illinois. They're both high school wrestlers, and Matt won state finals in a, single, in a single year twice, and Mark finished second in his single year. I think they both went on to Bellevue, and then uh, Mark was entered in a Division I, uh, Matt was entered in a Division I uh, wrestling program at Eastern Illinois University. So after he graduated, their, uh, the promotion of cage fighting, promotion UFC, was just in its infancy. And it used to be called No Holds Fighting. And on New Year's Day, uh, back in 1998 in Chicago, he won his first fight in 15 seconds by a KO, and it was refed by Pat Milovich, who is also a uh, MMA legend. And Pat became his coach and mentor. Matt and his brother Malk became part of Miltich Fighting Systems in Bendorf, Iowa. And at the time, it was one of the elite fighting schools in the country. Jens Pulver, Tim Sylvia, and Robbie Lawler also went to that school. In a later episode, we're going to discuss the brutal Robbie Lawler-Roy McDonald fight that I caught a glimpse of um, watching one of Alpaca Thesaurus's episodes about a year ago, and it was one of the most bloodiest fights you've ever seen. I actually think I tried to watch the fight, and I, I stopped. Uh, kind of hard to watch. It was either that one or another one. At any rate, uh, Robbie Lawler is another one in my list of we're going to discuss him and check him out. So uh, he won his third match, and then he started winning matches. Uh, his career took off. And he had a middleweight fight with David Monet. Hughes dominated it, and then he became up to fight the UFC undefeated champ, Dennis Holman, who guillotined Hughes um, in an unanimous decision. And I think at that point, Dennis had a 15-match 
winning streak. And then uh, Mark had a fight with Pelé, who also got knocked out. Oh, pardon me, Pelé knocked him out. And then he won his next five fights. Because his coach had lost a fight with Carlos Newton, Dana White, who had just become, I believe, president of UFC, decided that Hughes was next in line for a title, even though Hughes thought his mentor, Pat Milovich, should have been up for it. Oh. They call this a crazy fight because when he knocked out Newton, he appeared to be unconscious at the time, but he still won the fight. I gotta check this out. I only saw a little bit of a clip today. Now, Newton won the rematch because he kept saying, oh, I should have won that fight. Matt was knocked out, yada, yada, yada. Uh, right before the rematch, Matt fought Hiragatha Sakurai, and I think he won that fight. So up until all this time, Matt's fights had been with people who he'd either gotten along with or were amiable with. But along comes Frank Twi Trigg, who was sort of a trash talker. And um, I think that I, I, I have, he ended up slamming Frank Twig while he was standing up, which was amazing. Uh, and at that point, Matt had a better record than Tito Ortiz. So then, and Tito had had five defenses. Matt's record was better. He fights BJ Penn, who has the record for the most losses trying to win a belt, I think. And uh, BJ choked him out in the first round, which everyone was amazed by. So then BJ quit the UFC, he went over to another promotion and there was a little spat and he sued them, yada, yada, yada. And then George Pierre, George St. Pierre shows up. Now, Mr. George, he's very classy. And he was 23 at the time, Matt was a bit older. Uh, uh, and from what I see, they had their first fight in 2002 and George St. Pierre idolized Matt You'll find with uh, a lot of fighters, for instance, Pat Berry, Rose Namajus' fiance, adored Michael Kirkhop, um, and they had fights together. So a lot of fighters, uh, they'll idolize their hero and then end up fighting them, and they love it. You know, They're, it's like a dream come true for them. So uh, GSP lost, and then there was a Trig rematch. Matt and Trig fought again. Dana White says it's his favorite fight. Uh, Trigg groined Hughes and had him in a rear naked choke, but Hughes ended up slamming Trigg and ended up ha getting him in a rear naked choke. And when you look at that, it, they're, they're literally on the mat and the guy's on top of him, he's choking him out, okay? But it's more graceful than that. I, I, don't, I don't know the whole physics and fundamentals, but I think you all understand what I mean. So. Then Matt had a fight with Hoist Gracie, one of the forefathers of MMA. The Gracie clan is immensely talented. They're all, they're all fighters. Most of them are fighters, okay? Um, now, Hoist was past his prime, past his prime, but um, I don't know who won that one. I wish I could tell. I think Matt won that one. And then he had another rematch with BJ. And then there was talks of fighting again with GSP. Now, with BJ, Matt got in, uh, BJ gave him a triangular arm ball. A triangular arm ball, from what I believe is, both guys are lying on the, on the mat, but one of them has the uh, arm pointing up between their legs. I wish I could explain it better, I'm just learning. So, uh, Matt won that. He, he, um, he's really, his, his whole M.O. is that he gets into these incredible positions and everyone thinks that he's lost and he hasn't. He ends up winning. Um, now, uh, after the GSP after the fight with BJ Penn, there was another talk of having another rematch with GSP, who, and I guess he, GSP won that, 
But then GSP fought Matt Sarah and lost to Matt Sarah. So that's the crazy thing about um, MMA. Mock has been called one of the greatest fighters ever. He had a um, bad accident train hit his truck and um, he's been recovering slowly from it. Um, I think that he's UFC Hall of Fame. They had uh, something, a big um, celebration of his honor. I really, I like his style. Um, there are fighters who um, suffer from head injuries and so some of them uh, have to retire, but, uh, and they go through personal problems, but um, it's because they're fighters, you know, it's combat. And so the best you can do is pray for them when they uh, don't feel that hot, you know, at the end of the day when they retire. So I think that that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed watching Octagon St. Laveau. I think next week we'll um, get into another ladies' night, and I'll try and do a breakdown. And we'll talk about uh, the Son and Machida, oh, pardon me, the, yeah, Son and Machida fight that um, is coming up. So. I hope you've enjoyed the show. This is Betty St. Laveau, your hostess, trying to teach myself and give you all some hints about all things in the octagon. Until next time, love each other. Ciao, babes.